Hello everyone. I chose to do my project on a personal issue between myself and my significant other. Um, so going forward, I'm going to look at how conflict management and negotiation could have been used and how um, both of us kind of react to the conflict that we're in. First off, um, I'll go into more detail in my actual paper in regards to what the situation is. So this is just going to be a high level overview of uh, kind of what is involved. Um, when I look at personality and behaviors, uh, myself, um, when I took the Myers-Briggs personality type, I came in at as an ENFP, which is considered lively, charismatic, and encouraging. Um, ENFPs work well when they can innovate and be creative, persuade others to action, and stimulate positive change. They generate enthusiasm for startup activities, are tireless in pursuit of newfound interests, and anticipate the needs of people and organizations. I am also um, very extroverted, and the type of leadership I exhibit primarily is charismatic. Um, the behaviors that I demonstrate in conflict, I usually will try and avoid the conflict between myself and my significant other. Um, I do try and I people please, so I will take responsibility even when it's not my fault. Um, I'll try and compromise even my own wants and needs to make others happy. Um, however, I do have a tendency when I get very frustrated to defend my own actions. Um, I get loud in order to feel like I'm being heard. Um, and sometimes my anger and frustration does take over. Um, when I'm faced with conflict, I do have a tendency to attack first um, before walking away, especially if I feel the need to defend myself. Um, it's not always the best action, um, but especially when faced with these conflicts with my significant other, I do have a tendency to feel that I have to defend instead of walking away. When we look at his personality type and behaviors, um, he is more of an ISTJ personality from Myers and Myers Briggs, um, which is they're thorough, hardworking, responsible. ISTJs work well with in traditional structures, following standard procedures, and keeping track of facts and details. They clarify responsibilities and roles, and they seek to maintain what is efficient and useful, and they follow through on their, on their commitments. Um, he is also very introverted, and his leadership style is more Machiavellian. The behaviors he demonstrates in conflicts are more manipulative, bullying, aggression, anger, and physical outbursts. Um, usually if things are not going the way that he wants, things get thrown. Um, the situations are manipulated, manipulated to um, make others feel like they did something wrong, that their opinion isn't right. Um, there's just a lot involved um, in it makes the other person feel very, it's very condescending. Um, when faced with conflict, um, he will either try to escape or attack, depending on if he feels cornered in the dispute. Um, especially if he, if he knows he's wrong, he has a tendency to attack. Looking at my own communication strategies, I do have a tendency to be passive to passive aggressive. Um, in, con in conflict, I should be more assertive in my communication style, um, not trying to, um, you know, address the situation in a negative manner, but trying to have confidence and explain my side. Um, when managing conflict, I should look at it more as a collaboration or accommodating. So instead of just always giving in, I should look to also, um, uh, Establish that my own wants and needs. Um, my negotiation style is 
usually more accommodating and compromising, uh, which is not always the best course of action. When looking at his communication strategy, it is more aggressive. Um, he has more of a competing conflict management, management style um, where he feels like he has to win. Um, he's also more um, adversarial and competitive um, when looking at that negotiation. He doesn't like to see situations from any other perspective but his own, um, even when compelling evidence is there showing that the other perspective is more accurate. When I look at like the negotiation process, um, preparation is key. I need to make sure that I have all of my ducks in a row, all of my information on hand. Um, if I stutter over what I'm saying, he takes that as the opportunity to attack. Um, from an introductory standpoint, I do try to keep my tone more cooperative um, instead of, you know, having that competitive um, tone. It does most in most cases progress to that. Um, during most of the conversation, I do try to use open-ended questions. There are times when direct questions are needed, but I also try and focus on the easiest issue first and try, a reach, uh, try and reach a resolution for those before addressing the larger issues. In the intensification portion, um, this is where the conflict usually escalates. It moves from that cooperative to the competitive, the bullying, anger, diversions, veiled threats, handoffs usually occur at this point. Um, patience and persistence don't always work um, when these other tactics are being used. In most cases, my anger and frustration get the better of me, and I have a tendency to sink to his level. Um, when we're closing the conflict or the negotiation, sometimes we just have to agree to disagree and walk away um, and try and come back to it when we have both cooled off. Other times, ultimatums, silence, and closing concessions are made. There are also moments when one side asks for a little bit more in that kind of thought process of you give them an inch and they want to, and they want to take a mile. The effectiveness aspect, the way that I have addressed negotiations in the past has not always been effective. In evaluating these different conflicts that continue to occur, I have found that I need to go about this in more of a peacemaking fashion with a focus on the four Gs that are talked about in Ken Sandy and Kevin Johnson's book, Resolving Everyday Conflict. My leadership, um, as I... I explained earlier is it's between the transformational to charismatic um, there's a focus on change the emotions of others and trying to inspire others um, also I have a high focus on being ethical and keeping a Christian perspective um, and trying to keep God at the forefront of my mind and what is appropriate and um, you know, looking at what others need more than what I need myself. My significant other, again, like I mentioned before, he's more of a Machiavellian leadership style. He's always on guard. He would rather be feared than to have kind of that cooperation. Very manipulative and deceptive. He does focus on what kind of rewards there are, um, you know, the punishment of others and his own personal gain. The recommendations and my Christian viewpoints on this are I you need to address it in a peaceful, peacemaking fashion, God-centered goals that are beneficial to all parties. You need to keep a selfish outlook. Um, do not be swayed from my goals and remember to not participate in the sinful actions. I need to stay positive and not compromise my own ethics to feel justified. Um, and I know what is right and I can't, I need to not let others make me feel that godly actions are wrong. Um, before all interactions, I need to remember to pray for God's guidance and for him to give me the right words to say. Thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you have a wonderful night.